Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the five part series where I have teamed up with Formula E to talk about electric cars. Now to my right, this is not an electric car. This is a 2002 Honda S2000. And to my left is an electric car. This is the 2018 Nissan Leaf. Now both of these vehicles produce power in very different ways and they put that power to the ground in very different ways. So in this video we're going to be looking at what's faster, electric torque versus combustion power. Now the S2000 is producing about 265 horsepower at the wheels and 163 pound-feet of torque at the wheels and this car weighs about 2,900 pounds. So it's got about 11 pounds for every horsepower at the wheel. Now the Nissan Leaf produces 147 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque. So it's got significantly less power, but it has significantly more torque. But this vehicle weighs about 3,500 pounds meaning about 24 pounds for every horsepower. And remember, this is power at the motor's output rather than at the wheels. So the S2000's advantage as far as power to weight is concerned uh, is even greater than shown by these ratios, uh, but it's more than doubled, more than twice as good of a ratio for the S2000 versus the Nissan Leaf. Okay, so now the fun part where we actually do some acceleration runs. So what I'm gonna be doing to test this, we're gonna be doing straight line acceleration from zero miles per hour up to 80 miles per hour and taking measurements every 10 miles per hour. And so for the electric car, all I'm basically doing is just flooring it. A uh, very simple process. With the S2000, it's a manual transmission. I'm not gonna rev it up and dump the clutch uh, for two reasons. First of all, I wanna show the differences uh, between an internal combustion engine and an electric motor. And by revving it up, you skip half the engine's rev range. So I wanna show that part to illustrate a point. And then also because in the real world, you're not gonna be dumping the clutch at every stoplight that you get to, uh, while you could just floor it in the electric car every time at a stoplight if you really wanted to. Uh, mechanically, you're not gonna be destroying a clutch like you would be in the S2000. And so we're going to get into these acceleration runs. Hopefully the S2000 doesn't do too poorly against this uh, kind of you know heavy, uh, boring electric car, you might say. Uh, and so it's gonna be an interesting comparison. I'm looking forward to seeing how the numbers turn out. Okay, and so first starting with the S2000, an aggressive start, but not just dumping the clutch. And here we have the Nissan Leaf. Okay, so these results are not entirely intuitive. So the S2000, perhaps a bit disappointingly slow, uh, but I think even more so the Nissan Leaf is surprisingly quick. So looking at the incrementals here, 10, 20, 30, 40 through 80 miles per hour, the Nissan Leaf is quicker to 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 miles per hour. The S2000 does not overtake it until 60 miles per hour. Uh, it's then quicker to 70 and 80, and that gap will continue to get wider past 80 miles per hour as the S2000 is still making good power and the Nissan Leaf is starting to lose power. So a two second gap there, uh, but the Nissan Leaf, you know, starting off quicker up to 50 miles per hour. So if we're to take a look at these two cars curves, uh, it's pretty surprising that they're almost identical. So here on the bottom, we have time here on the left axis, we have speed and you can see, you know, the Nissan Leaf does better up until about 50 miles per hour. And that's where things change. And then it will start to develop a gap once you get into those higher speeds past 80 miles per hour. Uh, you can see that that gap starts to widen there and will continue to get worse for the Leaf as it starts to lose power and the S2000 maintains power up in those high RPM. Now this is pretty interesting because these two cars have very different power to weight ratios. And so it kind of gives you an idea that, you know, when looking at an electric car, the power to weight ratio isn't necessarily going to tell you it's uh, especially it's low speed acceleration. As you can see, it's doing much better than the S2000 here uh, up until about 50 miles per hour. And so why is this? This is where we're gonna get into the torque and horsepower curves for each of these two vehicles to help explain why this happens and why these two cars have such similar acceleration yet very different power to weight ratios. 
And so here, looking at this torque and horsepower curve, what we've got going on, the dotted line here represents torque. In blue is the Nissan Leaf. The solid line is horsepower. And then in red is the S2000. So here we have the Nissan Leaf's torque curve, which as you can see, it starts at peak torque, uh, 236 pound feet right from zero RPM all the way to about 3,300 RPM, where the vehicle then reaches peak power, 147 horsepower, and then just flat lines that power until about 10,000 RPM and then it starts to taper off. Uh, but this is at about 80 miles per hour. So this is at about where our test uh, is occurring. And then here with the S2000, you're going to have that torque curve build up and then your horsepower curve build up as well. Basically continuously this almost straight line, it doesn't look exactly like a straight line, but it's pretty much like that up until about 9,000 RPM where it's at 265 horsepower. And so the difference here and the reason why we see the Nissan Leaf have the edge initially is because initially you can see it makes more power. So we're looking at this difference in power right here where at these lower speeds, the Nissan Leaf is putting more power down to the ground, it's doing more useful work, and so it's accelerating the car faster. And then once the S2000 starts to get to about 20 to 30 miles per hour, once it gets past about 5,000 RPM, then it gets in its sweet spot where it is now making more power than the Leaf. And so then it starts to accelerate faster. So going from 10 miles per hour to 20 miles per hour takes about 1.24 seconds going from 20 miles per hour to 30 miles per hour just takes about one second. So it's starting to accelerate faster once it gets out of this little hole right here and starts to get into these higher RPMs and starts to make more power. And so that's where it starts to have the advantage and you start to see it pass it. But what's interesting about electric cars is that because they have that initial torque, they accelerate so quickly from a stop. And so, you know, in city driving scenarios, uh, you know, where you're driving 10 to 50 miles per hour, you're pretty much always gonna be faster unless you're gonna dump the clutch. Uh, and, you know, speaking of, Simply, if you're curious, yes, in the S2000, if you just rev up to 5,000, dump the clutch, hold it above 5,000, you can accelerate faster than the Leaf uh, to 10 through 50 miles per hour all the way to 80. And the reason being is because you're skipping this whole part of the equation. So you skip all the way to 5,000 RPM, 6,000 RPM, and then you maintain your power curve above that of the Leaf. And so as a result, if you dump the clutch and you're willing to sacrifice your clutch life to do so, then you know you can keep the car in this region and you can have it accelerate faster. Uh, but just for normal daily driving, in those scenarios, you're gonna be waiting up until you get beyond that in order to accelerate really well uh, because you have to have that torque build up as a result of the engine's characteristic. So it's pretty interesting uh, the differences here between how the electric car and how the combustion car uh, work and put that power down with very different power to weight ratios. Okay, so what does this have to do with Formula E? Well, Formula E is primarily city circuit racing, and so the courses are all pretty tight, uh, but this is actually the environment in which electric cars do very well. So the top speeds are relatively low because it's a city circuit, uh, but the cars are still moving very quickly through it because they have that benefit of that immediate low end torque. And so they can still accelerate very quickly. And in fact, for season five, for the next season, these cars are gonna have 200 kilowatts of power during the race, about 268 horsepower, or about the same as my Honda S2000, and yet they're capable of hitting 62 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour in just 2.8 seconds. So yes, they are lighter. They're about 2,000 pounds or 900 kilograms, uh, but their performance for the power that they have is pretty incredible. So, you know, the same acceleration as the Porsche GT2 RS, which has significantly more horsepower, much better power to weight ratio than a Formula E car, and yet the Formula E car is hitting that zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just 2.8 seconds. So very quick acceleration, and all of this is the result of how electric motors work, producing that peak torque uh, from the very beginning and delivering peak power uh, once you get up into the higher rev range. So I hope you've all enjoyed this. Thank you so much to Formula E for partnering on the video and thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.